We see your screen. Yay. No hill for a high stepper, everybody, right? We're going to get this thing done. So, hey, I'm Brian Horvath, and Pam, thank you so much for the introduction, and I appreciate you did not botch my name. It was pretty darn close, so 98%, we'll roll with that. So, thanks, thanks for uh, introducing me, and so I'm really thankful for RUMC. I spoke at RUMC a couple years ago live. I think it might have been 2018, and that was just a great experience. I think I did the dinner talk. And I'm so thankful to Jay and Catherine and, and you, Pam, and the whole job networking team at RUMC, including all the leadership at RUMC to have me. Um, just really, it's an investment, right, across the board. So from the people that put it together to those that are speaking to those that are receiving, we're all investing um, time, talent, and treasure here and our resources to be able to take in the content that uh, I've been preparing for you. And I hope that this is a great wrap to your day of learning and networking the best you can online and just participating. So my keynote tonight is how to unlock your career purpose. And, uh, you know, this is an important time to be thinking about these kinds of things. And I would even challenge this thing all the time is a great time to be thinking about our, our purpose. Specifically here, we're going to talk about our career purpose. And I'm going to provide and help us all discover three keys to unlock the purpose for our career no matter where we start. And so a lot of us are coming in today to, uh, from a different place, right? And not just location or uh, from background or experience, but, you know, all, all kinds of different places, what I'll get into in a second. Just a little quick um, orientation, um, <laughs> and no better to give it than me after I just got lost on my own two computer screens, um, but uh, chat box is open for you guys to go ahead and put any questions or comments, uh, thoughts you have. I will be reading those. Um, most likely afterwards, um, but would love to answer questions afterwards. And I'll include my email a couple times and ways you can connect with me and uh, give us opportunities to connect on a question or a thought or, um, you know, anything that you have in mind based on what I'll be bringing up today. Um, so the chat box is there. Questions, you can go ahead and email me. You want to write this down, brian at brianhorvath.com, brian at brianhorvath.com. And be glad, like I said just a minute ago, to connect with you on that. It'd be a, a privilege and a pleasure. And for many of you, if you heard my talk on, uh, let's see, the 8th of June for the little 15-minute lunch talk or whatever that we, we called that so inspirational, uh, we've been communicating back and forth. And so I've been really appreciative of that, and it's, it's been a joy. So what do I do? I'm the president and CEO of the Horvath Training Institute, and our company, my little company, is about a year old now. But what I do is help people to know, live, and love the purpose for their career in finances. And that's really um, special to me, and you'll see here why in a little bit. Uh, I'm definitely excited to, to talk about this. I'm, I'm authentic when I share. I'm very, I am very like to bring um, information and education and wisdom, but also um, encourage. And as a speaker, consultant, and coach, my, one of my favorite things to do is encourage. And um, it's why I wrote my ebook called Your Purpose, How to Know It, Live It, and Love It, where I share, share spiritual, emotional, and practical um, stories and insights uh, from my life and uh, ministry and just my experiences as well in business and leading nonprofits throughout the country. So um, I have and I had the opportunity to work with thousands and thousands of people over the years in many different venues. And I currently reside with my family, my little kids, and myself and my two little dogs here in Tampa, Florida. And um, just love to connect with you. So you guys can find me actually on LinkedIn too, at LinkedIn slash in slash the Brian Horvath, because uh, apparently there's more than one Brian Horvath out there. So I had to put the, <laughs> the Brian Horvath, which is always fun to explain to people. But um, yeah, so that's me. And here's my family. This is me and my wife, Becky. And then our little kids, Grayson is five, and he'll be six in January. So he might tell you five and a half or something to that effect. And then little Ella will be three in September. So September 3rd is her birthday. So really excited about sharing life with my family and uh, had a nice Father's Day yesterday and whatnot. So this one let you guys know, you know, I'm a real person with real people in my life and real problems and challenges and opportunities just like you. And so that's where I come from. I come with energy. I come with enthusiasm, authenticity, and uh, I won't be afraid to share with you my uh, – oopses throughout the way if I think they can help uh, encourage you and help you along your journey. So with no much, you know, no further ado, let's do this, huh? Let's take a ride, let's fly, and let's explore together in these next 40 minutes or so. So 
what are we going to do? Well, I was going to put together a worksheet for you guys, but you know what? Life happened today in a little bit, and I wasn't happy with that, but it happened. So I would just encourage you, as we begin, be prepared to relax, be prepared to listen in, be prepared to take notes, you know, jot little things down here or there. And uh, hopefully, you know, this isn't like a rigorous 40-some minutes, but it's going to give you, I think, a lot of things to think about. And so I would just encourage you, as we begin, remember that this is a dialogue. It's a conversation, which is why I have on the first slide, Johnny I, who was an Apple um, uh, designer, one of the big guys in the company back in the day that worked with Steve Jobs, developing the first iPhone and the iPad and all those kinds of things. And he said, the best ideas start as conversations. And so the best we can over the Zoom platform, let's have a conversation um, or at least start one, you know, and um, I think that will be really cool if you remember that as we go into some of these pieces throughout the talk today. So when we have a dialogue, right, when we have a conversation, we have some questions, some questions we need to think about. And for our context here today, I ask you, you know, are you currently unemployed? And you might say yes or no, maybe so, whatever the case may be. And so, you know, that's what I'm just going to say. Are we unemployed? Are we currently unemployed right now? Are we in between opportunities? Those are things we need to think about as we have this dialogue. Where are we in our audience today? Where am I? Um, you know, where are we in this COVID crisis today? You were employed, right? Maybe, maybe, but you're working from home. And, and let's be honest, if you work from home, hello, I do too. It's just not the same. In some ways, that's really good. In other ways, not so much. And uh, if you live in a certain community that pulls bandwidth from a certain place, um, it seems like everyone's, you know, got their uh, hand out for more bandwidth. Um, matter of fact, we just upgraded our internet here, hoping to get a slice of a, a, a bigger, or make the pie bigger. You don't need a bigger slice, you just need to make the pie bigger. And that's kind of some of the challenges. Maybe you got kids, or maybe there's just an environment where it's like really hard to get anything done in your working from home situation. Not easy. Not easy. So maybe you're there. Maybe the COVID crisis has you in a tizzy. Or maybe you've got out of one, yet to find ourselves back in one because there's spikes all over the country and we don't have an end and we don't know what's going to happen and blah, 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 blah. And it's an election year and there's other crises at hand in our country. But let's just take COVID, for example. There's fear. Fear of the unknown. There's worry about an income. If you're in outside sales, where, how are you going to sell to this company that's not open or you're out of work. You know, there's a lot of things going on that can cause also anxiety. And I don't know if, you're, if, if this is like this for most people, but for me, I, I kind of get a little fearful. That kind of gets creeps into anxiety land. And all of a sudden, I can't control my surrounding, right, or my situation, or something's not working the way I saw it. And then I get angry. And some of us may be angry right now. We're angry about, well, how long, long is this going to last? Or this is going on at work, or it's not going on at work, or I'm just getting mixed signals. And so this is normal. I want to tell you right now, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. Maybe that's what you needed to hear today. I know I need to hear that a lot, like in my parenting. Hey, uh, our kids scream like that too. Oh, they did? You know, it just changes. It's like a little quarter turn in our day and in that moment that it changes our perspective. So maybe some of the questions are, I'm trying to plot my next career move. And I'm just stuck in career cement. Doesn't mean you don't have skills. Don't, doesn't mean you don't have abilities. You surely have dreams and, and desires, I would imagine. But you're kind of stuck. Or maybe it's overwhelming. There is so much information out there. So many um, voices. Hey, I'm one, right? I'm trying to pour out into you today. I'm a voice. Where do I go? Who do I believe? Who do I trust? I mean, it can be difficult, especially in a crisis. And employment or in between jobs, or even if you're at a job you don't like, these things can still create an opportunity to be stuck. We're going to help you get unstuck today. How's that sound? Have you ever been at a here or a there? And notice how I have those in, in quotes. Oops, looks like I missed a quote there. But hey, here or there happens for all of us. And what is a here or a there? And I talk about this in my book, Your Purpose. And it struck me because for many times, or maybe for me, for sure, 
there are times or places or emotions and relationships that I visualized happening a certain way. Or maybe not happening a certain way. That might be you today. I wasn't supposed to be here. I should have been like over there by now. Me out of work or me stuck or how did I get so angry about this situation or fearful? Let me share with you a couple of examples here. Maybe you've said this in your life or heard this. And in my years of speaking and coaching, these are real um, scenarios. As a child, I wanted to be a major league baseball player. I'm 21 now, and I'm off to yet another arm surgery. I thought I would have been in the major leagues by now. See, that in the majors is a there. This person thought they should have been there in the majors. Here's another one. When I first started working for this company, I saw myself on the leadership team, on the executive team, in that corner office one day. Yet here I am sitting in the same chair with the same title for the last eight years. That on the executive team is a there. I've been running my own business for three years. And when I penned my name to my LLC, I saw my company serving three counties by now with at least five employees. See that serving three counties, five employees is a there. I'll give you one more. I recently retired from 30 plus years of business. I've served as a CEO and a high level volunteer at a nonprofit. I'm concerned though, in my new season of life that I won't matter. Business, technology, people, they move so fast these days. I feel out of the loop. The here is that feeling of irrelevance for that person. Have you been there? Maybe you're there now, you're having that, how did I get here? But I want to go like there or there. Well, life has a way, doesn't it? Life has a way to sometimes it feels like set us up and knock us down. The ups, the downs, all around. It makes you want to get sick sometimes. But through all that, through all the muck and mire, and me being an encourager, remember, and an optimist, and someone who's futuristic, <laughs> you're set up. Because I'm convinced of this. No matter all that, you have a purpose. No matter where you're at, no matter what you've done, no matter what your here is today or what your there is or whatever will be, you have a purpose. And I'm also convinced of this. You have a career purpose. And I want to help you unlock it. Because I, don't, I believe, I know, and I've seen it. And you probably have too. Maybe you never heard it this way. Maybe you have. But our purpose is not in our career, right? Our purpose is not in our career. It's not in our finances. It's not in our career. No, our purpose is achieved through tools or the use of tools like our career, like our finances, which no matter where you're at, gives you hope to know that, thank God, this isn't all there is. That our career, our finances, are tools to accomplish the purpose that we have for us. And I want to help you in your career purpose. I want to provide for you three keys to unlock your career purpose. Because we all know that sometimes there's not like that skeleton key, right? There's not the same key that unlocks every single door in the house or in your career or in life. There are other keys that you need. Some of us, we have them already. And they're on our key ring right now. Some of us, we have to go get it. Some of us, we have to get it cut differently. And sometimes we just need to like knock the door down, <laughs> right? But in this case, I'm going to give you three keys to unlock your career purpose. And here they are right here. I'm going to give them pretty simple. I want you to know it. You got to know your career purpose. I believe when you know it, you can live it, right? You can recognize that you're living it. And I'm under the inclination and understanding when you know it and you're living it, you're going to love it. And that's the good news today that I get to share with you. So you want to write those down. The three keys to unlock your career purposes. I know my career purpose. So know it. I'm living my career purpose. Maybe you already are eventually. You just want to do little tweaks or quarter turns. You want to live your career purpose. And then ultimately, doesn't mean every day. Doesn't mean we're not like always ecstatic about our career. But I believe when you know it, when you know your career purpose, when you live it, you're going to love it. So that's what we're going to talk about today. These three keys. This is the framework. 
And I'll give you, like I said earlier, practical, emotional, and spiritual help to guide you along the way. No matter your background, no matter your age, no matter your faith, no matter your gender, no matter your race, it doesn't matter, guys. These are true success and wisdom principles that we all have a purpose. And we have a career purpose as well. So let's talk about knowing it. Let's talk about knowing it. And by the way, I'm going to share the slide deck with you afterwards and a couple other things I'll talk about at the end. So don't forget to grab it all. Grab a couple of notes. Stay engaged. But ultimately, I will share this deck with you if you'd like to go through it with yourself, for yourself, or with somebody else. Share it with somebody else. Okay, know it. Great minds have purposes. Others have wishes. Great minds have purposes. Others have wishes. Washington Irving. I love that quote. And what we got to do for us to know our career purpose is we got to seek the truth. Absolute truth. Not what we feel, but what we know, what can be proven, those kinds of truths. What is true. An honest perspective, whether it hurts or not. And no matter where you're at today, it's going to take strength. It's going to take courage. You better have gone through a couple of the workshops today from these awesome speakers. Many of them um, I know. Some of them I know, I should say. And they gave you their best. Now, what are you going to do with it, right? Well, we got to have an honest perspective to take the necessary and right next steps. And we have courage to seek the truth. It's hard. So how did I get here? Be a little personal here with you guys. I'm from Pittsburgh, then went to Ohio State after high school. Parents didn't think I was going to graduate high school. Um, I'd rather have been sleeping through most of my classes. I finally woke up one day, and boom, I realized I need to get out of here. <laughs> I can't stay here for much longer, um, and I wanted to go to college. That was always a dream. I just wish I could have bypassed high school kind of thing. That was kind of my mindset. And then that was great and all, but once I got off free into college at Ohio State, I quickly took all my wants and desires, see from the 18 years I was alive up until school, and put all those wants and desires on a credit card. I had a debt attitude. <laughs> I got into debt left and right, up and down, anywhere you could, all kinds of loans. It was, it was I mean, looking back, like, what, what, what was I thinking? Well, I wasn't thinking. That's the problem. I didn't have an understanding about success. I thought I looked good, I smelled good, but I was broke. I thought I could just do it or I could will it to happen. Well, I learned the hard lesson. I wish I would have learned it earlier, but it took me a little longer than I'd like to, sit, to, like to admit. But my lack of an understanding about how money works, how the world works, how adulting works, whatever you want to call it, that contributed a lot to my issues that I had. Now, I did great in college. I loved it. I flourished there in many respects, but not every respect. And once I graduated from college in four years, um, got a Got a job right out of school. It wasn't an issue. Making $27,000. Woo! That was my first get out of uh, school salary. And, but I found myself in pain. And I found myself broken and busted. And I found myself running from the truth, which is why I brought the truth, that I had some issues that if I was going to be successful, if I was going to live the dreams and desires of my heart that I wanted to, I need to get it together. But I just didn't feel like it. <laughs> right? So if I wanted to do something, I did it. If I didn't want to do something, I didn't. That was kind of like my attitude, very lackadaisical, thinking it would just all work out. And of course, didn't want to address or even knew how to spell the word consequence. Sound familiar? All that to say is, that's a little bit about my story, how I got even here to talk to you today about this stuff. So obviously, you know, it's been a good story because I wouldn't even have the opportunity to speak to you about these things if I hadn't overcome some of that stuff early on. So it's a little, little uh, uh, give her away or whatever that's called, spoiler alert. Together by myself, though, I was imploding because I made so many mistakes. I didn't want to have shame or guilt uh, experience more than I already did for myself. I surely didn't want someone else heaping it on me. And I thought if I were going to tell anybody about this, my problems, my challenges, the real issues, then I'd be in trouble. I'd be found out. And that caused me not to live on purpose, right? Because I wasn't really ready to clean up the junk, to clean up the baggage, to get out of the, the kind of the, the trap that I had set for myself. So I kept others at a distance. You might be doing that right now. You might not be feeling too good about yourself, about your career. And it doesn't just mean because you might be unemployed. I just mean in general. You find yourself stuck. Maybe you're not working all you can because you just don't love what you do and it's painful. I get it. I've been there. Okay, so maybe you have a lot of limiting beliefs. I did. 
I wanted to run from my troubles. I had limiting beliefs. You know, I had limiting beliefs about people. They didn't want to help me. They just wanted to take from me. Things, I can't do that. Places, I don't ever go back there again, or I'll never make it there. See, the here or there, they come up again. Experiences, I touched that hot stove. I'm not making that mistake again. Or maybe you simply just fear the unknown. And of course, what do I want to do? I want to blame others. That's easy. Eh, it's their fault. It's their fault. I didn't think I could be successful, and I was wandering around aimlessly. Maybe you are too. Maybe right now you go, man, this COVID crisis or my unemployment or my furloughed or my being stuck in the career cement has got me out of sorts. But looking back, and you probably are too, I was looking for purpose. I didn't know it, but all the things I was trying, all the stuff I was doing, I was trying to find my purpose. And in my career, I changed jobs so many times. It, it was like getting my, uh, you know, oh my gosh, talk about blaming others. It's the boss's fault. Those were all limiting beliefs that kept me from knowing, living, and loving my purpose. You may have heard uh, the song. There's a little quote from the song. All around your island, there's a barricade that keeps out the danger that holds in the pain. It's a Tom Petty song. Tom Petty song called Walls. I don't know about you. Are you building a wall? Have you built one? Yeah, it may keep out you you know, telling others about what you're going through, but it also keeps that pain in that wants to escape, that your purpose is begging for it to escape. So what is the truth? How do we get around this? Well, I told you I'd bring some spiritual things. Now, I don't know everyone's faith. Obviously, I'm not connecting with everyone as well as I'd like to because we're on a Zoom call. But I believe, what I believe, what I've experienced in my own life is this, that we are all God's masterpieces. We are all God's masterpieces. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things, not just the things, the good things that we planned long ago. No, he planned long ago. For we are God's what? Masterpiece. How I see masterpiece is one of a kind, unique, fearfully and wonderfully made. Not one and done, but a one and only. And that's you. That's me. God's masterpiece. But when we're not, when we don't know our purpose and we're not living it out, we're not loving it, we're not on the museum floor to be seen by all those folks behind the velvet rope, like a masterpiece painting, right? We're downstairs in like, in the, in like the crates with dust, not being brought out. Man, a masterpiece should be on display. It should lead. It should get oohs and ahs, right? So I want to help you with that in your career. So let's take a moment. Let's take a moment just to kind of take a quick break. I want you to know your purpose. I want you to know your career purpose. Again, not, it's not the end, be all end all. Your career purpose helps you accomplish the overall purpose. Write down real quick. Take a couple bulleted notes maybe even. I believe my career purpose is, and then write. Now, if you need some help, because I'm going to send you this deck, you can download my free ebook, and this is all in there. Um, you know, I'm bringing it in a different perspective with career as the focus, but if you need some help. You answer kind of questions, the basic questions, right? The kind of the Inspector Clouseau questions, the what, the who, the when, where, why, how. What is my career purpose? Who will it involve in my life? When will it happen? Where would happen? You know, and we can go deeper into all these. When I do coaching, this is kind of go. Just pull this out of folks and help them see beyond what they see. Get over the many limiting beliefs. Crush them. Get them out of the way. Why would I do that for my career purpose? How am I going to get that done? What's the plan look like? And that can be a plan on a post-it note, a plan on a napkin, a plan on the back of your hand, or this long, grown-up business plan. We don't need to start with all that. Just who or the what, the who, the when, the where, the why, and the how. That will help you get your career purpose written down. And we're just taking a first swipe at it, right? Okay, so include more. So more about how to know it, because this is the biggest thing. People get stopped up in, on knowing it. And if they don't know it, they're going to live it and love it and change the world for the better. 
I love Mark Twain's quote. You may have seen this before. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. You kind of get the feeling from this little picture here that this lady had just discovered <laughs> the reason why she was born. Right? And there's a freedom to that. And I want to help you get there because that freedom will lead, it will shine, it will break through the career crud that you may be going through. It will break through the career crud that you may be going through. It's too bright. When you know your purpose, it's too bright to contain. So what are four ways to know your career purpose? This is, I love the practical stuff. I'm a practical person. Know it. Four ways to know your career purpose. Number one, complete a study. Well, duh, right? No, maybe not. Maybe not, duh. I'm a learner, so I tend to forget sometimes that folks don't have all these books all over the place. And my wife would say, Brian, you got too many. Maybe some of you are like that too. But complete a study, something that's going to help you answer the question. I believe my career purpose is. I believe my life purpose is. Whatever it is, complete a study. And here's one for you. Some of you may have heard this one. It's the You Are Created for Good Works workbook provided by Crossroads Career. And RUMC uses that every single meeting, um, elements of it, and you can get it as well. It's an amazing book, and it's a workbook and a website. You can find out more at crossroadscareer.org. But it's a seven-step action plan to help you navigate these questions we're talking about. Another one is Financial Peace University. Well, what's money got to do with my career? Well, I hear that often, actually. You may be surprised, but I actually hear that. It has a lot, right? If money wasn't an issue, what career would you have? Are you doing what you'd want to do if money wasn't an issue? And it's not bad if you are, not great if you aren't, or vice versa. It's just a question. But money opens the doors to a lot of things. It's not the only tool, again, thank God, but it is a major tool to help us do things. And remember what work is all about, solving problems, right? Money can solve some problems. Well, you can create them too. Mo money, mo problems. When my songs back in high school or college, but it, completing a study of financial peace university will help you see clear in your money so you can make better career and life choices based on some of your values that you identify when it comes to money. This content changed my life back in 2007. Okay, number two, after completing a, a study, read regularly, and that doesn't mean read a book a week. That means read regularly. Here's a couple good books. The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. There's a reason why it's like crazy, crazy languages in print and, oh gosh, how many millions and a book sold. Another one is Living Forward. This is a very intensive uh, book that makes you work. <laughs> it, it, has, it draws out of you what your uh, life purpose is based on what do you want people to say at your funeral kind of like questions. What's your legacy? And then working backwards. Another one is halftime and i love that book some of you may have read that already I, I just tore that book apart it's going from success to significance talk about purpose and of course the most selling book of all time the bible great wisdom in there and if you're not um a reader of the bible no worries i would have you start if you want to check it out with the book of proverbs it's an amazing book of wisdom and a lot about career a lot about wisdom and finances and decisions in life Okay, the other thing is to write regularly. So read regularly and write regularly. Let's call it your purpose journal. Something where you capture your thoughts, emotions, experiences, prayers, the good, the bad, the ugly, and put it down. Put it down. It's cathartic. It will help you. Uh, I'm not perfect at it. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you came to my office, I see my six journals over there. Four of them uh, don't have anything in them but they look good. <laughs> so I do get the challenge with this. I'm just saying, try it. Try writing something down. Um, I bought recently a, a little notepad with two pencils that can be used in the shower that can get wet. And then my little girl threw one down the, uh, down the drain. So I had over another pencil, but Hey, those are things that seem to come to you. These ideas come to you when you're driving, put on your audio on your uh, phone and record. Just doesn't mean you have to say something all the time, but maybe on your way to work. If you can, something may come up because you're driving depending if you're, if you're actually going to the office. All right, know it. Another one, invest in assessments. DISC, D-I-S-C, amazing. I won't get into all that. Trust me, I want to because I love DISC, but it help you understand your personality, but even bigger, help you understand how you interact with other personalities. 
huge, huge, huge to help you know your purpose and how you can live that out effectively as well. UMAP is a book by my friend Kristen Sherry, and she has a coaching program called UMAP. Um, great stuff. Look it up. Google it. It's on Amazon. Clifton Strengths, which is Strengths Finders 2.0. Mine are Futuristic, Activator, Achiever, Competition, and Significance. Having that has been amazing for me to help me recognize what is going on with my career. Help me realize, why do I think that way? Why do I feel that way? Oh, I have a strength in that area. And then you start working more on your strengths instead of always trying to build up your weaknesses. It's freeing. Get it. Don't wait. There's an assessment that comes with the book. It's like penny. So take it out uh, or grab it. Check it out. Find a mentor or coach. Okay. Remember earlier we talked about the truth, right? The truth earlier we said hurts. We all believe that. We all understand that. We may think we can take it, but when we hear some of it, we're like, ooh. A mentor or a coach can help you really crush your limiting beliefs and help you eliminate your blind spots. And it's counterintuitive, I know, because I've had people hire me as a career coach in these times, and they're going like, well, I don't really have a lot of money to pay for it. I'm like, I get it. But this is an investment. And so sometimes you're trying to figure out how to get your money together, potentially with your budget, depending on where you're at. Um, But if you can swing it, if you can make it work, find a quality career coach. That doesn't mean every career coach is paid, but there's something about having that investment, having that one-on-one time. But also, you've had great opportunities at RUMC, even virtually, to get connected with these leaders and these speakers and professionals who are investing their time into you. Trust me, they love doing it too because it, it were made to give. But you need a coach. Find somebody. Ask somebody. And if you want some great questions to ask a mentor, to interview a mentor, email me. I'll send you some. They're great and real easy. But mentors help us solve problems with systems that they've created, processes that are proprietary to them. They seek to serve. These are some of the nuggets. Okay? Don't wait. Get a coach. Start interviewing at least. Interview one this week. That will give you freedom. It will help you lift with two instead of just you. Check it out. So, know it. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. We spent a lot of time on know it, and we only have so much time left. But take the time. Brainstorm on these four tools. How can you use them? Circle one that you can use next week. All right, live it. Know it, we talked about. Now let's live it. See, it's not enough to have lived. We should be determined to live for something. What's pulling us? What's out there in the distance? You know, think about the racetrack, right? I don't know if it's dogs or the horses. They chase something, (laughs) right? I don't do that stuff, but I, you know, watched enough. And that's what we need to do. What's out there for us to go live it? And how do we use a compass to get to that place where we're supposed to go? Because you know, and I know, there is a difference when you live your career purpose. It just shows. I mean, people see it. You feel it. It's amazing. Your kids notice it. So, you know, and, and there's times when we have been on a career purpose. If you're like, I want to get back there. Or maybe you're asking, how do I get here? Well, life has ups, downs, and all arounds. But we have a purpose. And that doesn't mean we have to stop. If we're still breathing, we're still living, let's do this, right? So no matter where you are, if you're over, if you're under, if you're on the sidelines, if you're in the game, if you're roughed up, no matter, you can do it. We got to go. You got a career purpose. I know you know it. But guess what? And you know, and I know, we experience the resistance right out of the gate. As soon as we put our flag, our stake in the ground, our flag of the mountain, our foot down, we're going, we're doing this starting now. And that could be weight loss. It could be writing a blog or a book. It could be finding a new career path. It could be asking somebody for feedback. You can make the phone call where you're going to get a yes or a no on a job. It could be the money talk with your boss. I mean, you name it, right? As soon as we're about to do something like amazing, the resistance creeps in. As soon as we venture out, guaranteed you're going to encounter it. So tomorrow, when you start making phone calls or working on your resume or going on LinkedIn, expect it. It will be there. Don't make it a cup of coffee. (laughs) But it will be there with you while you have your cup of coffee. Stephen Pressfield wrote a book. He wrote, uh, well, first of all, Stephen Pressfield wrote uh, Legend of Bagger Vance a movie with Will Smith, a golfer, and a caddy. But he also wrote this book called The War of Art. And in The War of Art, when Stephen Presswell goes to create or write or whatever, he says, gosh darn it, I'm encountering that resistance again. And he calls it 
the most toxic force on the planet. I'll call it, I mean, he calls it also, it's evil. It's an evil force that wants to keep us from doing nothing. Don't be that person. Or when you get to that point, call out the resistance for what it is and put it away and say, get out of here because it will come. And when it comes, you have an amazing opportunity to overcome it because of that purpose that's out in front of you that you're going to live. So a couple ways, how do we defeat the resistance? You want to write these down, man. These are practical stuff. Four things. One, or excuse me, I think it's three things. One, create vision and mission statements for your family. Create visions and missions, vision and mission statements for your family. Here's ours. Now, my wife and I are Christians. We're uh, followers of Christ Jesus. So our vision for our life, our futuristic statement, our preferred future, our one day will be this. Team Horvath is a reflection of the love that Jesus Christ has for the church. We want that to be noticed and recognized. Why? We'll take a look at the mission statement. We hope the mission statement undergirds the vision. It pushes the vision to, to happen. A mission, surrender to Jesus Christ. The Horvaths are Bible-believing, people-loving, debt-free living, kingdom-giving leaders who influence their community for the glory of God. And I took a picture that I forgot to put in the darn presentation here, but I took a picture where we have this. We had it painted on this um, little canvas and put it in our bathroom so we could see it every morning. So how do we defeat the resistance, including vision and mission statements, establish annual goals? You guys have probably all heard as professionals of SMART goals. And these are basically specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, and time sensitive. Okay, there's a couple different ways to look at it. And Michael Hyatt even has something called SMARTER goals. But these are the areas right here, these seven areas, health, family, wealth, social, physical, intellectual, and spiritual. Again, remember, I'm going to send you this slide deck. Build and belong to a dream team. I love talking about the dream team. It's a number of people that you have in your life that will support you in the ups and the downs and the all arounds. Men and women, folks that are maybe younger, even older, different ethnicities, backgrounds, experiences. You want to have a solid dream team bringing skills together in your life. It's kind of like your own personal board of directors that's going to help you, Inc., succeed. Along with this group and that coach, man, you get ready to get ready. Tie your running shoes because it's time to get busy living out our purpose. Have a dream team. I wrote some posts, some blog posts on this. You can check out my blog at blog.brianhorvath.com and find it out there. So here's a real recap to live it. Create your vision and mission statements. Establish annual SMART goals at a minimum. Build and belong to a dream team. And say carpe diem, right? Seize the day. Seize the day. And we have a choice when it comes to these things to live it. It's either get busy living or get busy dying. That's from the gentleman Andy Dufresne, if you remember the Shawshank Redemption. You got to get busy living or get busy dying. All right, as we wrap up, Couple minutes. Love it. You may not make it to the top, right? You may not make it to the top, but if you're doing what you love, there is so much more happiness than being rich or famous. Tony Hawk, you may know Tony Hawk. He's a pro skater. Cool stuff. Something I cannot do. Maybe you can. But anyway, love it. When you know it and when you're living it, because it's your purpose, your career purpose, I believe you will love it. But how do I know if I love my purpose? Well, I can tell you one way you won't. And this is about my story in 2006. When I figured out that I was the problem in my life and that problem had to be solved. Walking home from a New Year's Eve party, 2006, I was angry. Angry at God, angry at myself, angry at my family, angry at other, you name it. You put whoever in the firing line because I was frustrated, frustrated. I was broke, busted, and disgusted. I did not want to live 2007 like I lived 2006 and years before. Now I was successful business-wise. I was making six figures. I was leading people. I had autonomy. I could travel. It was great. I mean, there was parts of it was great. I actually was in the wine industry, luxury wine industry. I got to do some cool things, but there was something missing deep inside. I had a career but I wasn't knowing, living, and loving my career purpose. And so on that night, 2006, New Year's Eve, left a New Year's Eve party that was probably the same one I went to last year, boring, and I 
circled around the party a couple times, just hoping to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. You ever been there? And ended up leaving. And when I was walking home, like I was telling you, crying and angry and frustrated, I walked into my house and tried to hang myself. Put a wire hanger around my neck and tried to pull it that hopefully I would solve this problem. And that problem, as you can imagine, as I thought, was me. It wasn't the other people. It was me. But really what it was, is me living without a purpose. It was me not having a vision, a mission. It was me not having people in my life to help me. It was not having a dream team or a coach or a mentor. It was me trying to do it all by myself. Good news. I'm here. I'm talking to you. God had other plans. And the resistance, because that's what it was that night, an epic battle between good and evil for my life, the resistance was defeated. Amen? Woo! So, what did I learn? I learned from Jeremiah 29, 11, 29, 11 through 14 about what was going on with me and what I was missing for a long time. And it says this, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope in a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with your whole and all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. See, I was a captive to myself and my limiting beliefs and my challenges, my ignorance, and my lack of understanding. I didn't know, live, and love my purpose. I missed the boat so many times. People tried to help me, I cast them off. Don't be that person. See this obstacle that you may be going through right now in your career as an opportunity. Seek out God with your whole heart. You'll be found by him. He'll be found by you. So here's some four benefits. If you're in sales, you know the features, the advantages. But how about the benefits? What's my life going to be like when I love my career purpose? Number one, you see with new eyes. There ain't nothing like it in a new pair of glasses, friends. And uh, I need them. <laughs> so you see with new eyes. You see people differently. You see life differently. Again, obstacle or opportunity. That's a benefit. When you love your career purpose, it's like a whole new day, brand new day. Or that old Aladdin song, it's a whole new world, right? Number two, you attract the right people. We all want to be around winners, don't we? I mean, really, don't we? If you really got down to a serious conversation, do we want to be around, uh, well, let's say losers? No, I want to be around winners. And you are one, my friend. We are purposeful people. We need to be on purpose. We're on purpose, we're winners. We attract the right people. The right people are attracted to us, us, them. It will set you up for success. You expand your influence. You have an opportunity to speak into things, to people, uh, to situations that you never had before. And a lot of times it's because limiting beliefs didn't even let you get there because you didn't know or live your purpose. And sometimes it's others don't trust you or don't know you because you've been afraid to share because you haven't been vulnerable. They don't know the real you. There's a whole bunch of reasons, but when you know, live, and love your purpose, get ready to expand your influence. And it's going to be for the good. And it's going to be with your family too, by the way. Not just workers or employers or employees or contractors or partners. It's for your family too. And we all know this. And Zig Ziglar said it. When we help enough people get what they want, we do get what we want. Now, the cool thing is, in the life journey, when you know, live, and love your purpose, a lot of those things that we want tend to change. But all that being said, when we seek to serve, we're well rewarded because we're helping others get what they desire. And in turn, we get things back. Peace, freedom, um, healthy uh, mental well-being and emotions, physical etc cetera, etc cetera. we get great great rewards as we wrap up i want you to embrace your purpose overall and specifically today we're talking about career purpose and all people have one all people have a purpose we all have a career purpose none of this is wasted but to have a life purpose and not know it it's torture it's torture 
to have a life purpose, know it and not live it, is living in denial. And to have a life purpose, know it, live it, and not love it, honestly, probably just requires some tweaking. So, so glad you joined me. What's next? We're flying. We're still flying high, and I hope and pray that this continues throughout the evening and into your night, and you get a rest of sleep, and into your next day as you tackle the obstacles in front of you, because that resistance will be there. So thanks to you for investing time with me. And by the way, as I prepared to help you, I got to learn a lot myself. And so I'm very thankful for that. So I invite you to download my free ebook, Your Purpose, How to Know It, Live It, and Love It. It's available on my website for free at brianhorvath.com slash book, where a lot of this was sourced from, but of course, I'm not going to read the whole book to you. And in addition, if you like this recording and the slides for this presentation, go ahead and email, email me at brian at brianhorvath.com, and I'd love to send them to you. Again, how to unlock your career purpose, you've learned the three keys to unlock it, know it, live it, and love it. It's been a pleasure to be with you. God bless you. Go get it.